One conclusion that economists draw about monopolies is that they're never going to produce at a quantity where they're actually facing inelastic demand at that quantity. And they're only going to produce quantities where their elasticity of demand is elastic at that point. We can go through some math here and we can start to understand why that is. As a reminder, elasticity of demand, or price elasticity of demand, to be more specific, is defined as follows. The elasticity of demand is just the absolute value of the percent change in quantity demanded divided by the percent change in price at a particular point along the demand curve. Now, sometimes your textbook might not take the absolute value here, in which case you would always be getting a negative number for price elasticity of demand because you'll notice that because demand curves slope downwards, the percent change in quantity demanded and the percent change in price are, ob are obviously always going to move in opposite directions. And we can think about, because we're going to be talking about what happens with inelastic demand, the way that I've defined elasticity here, inelastic demand would just be where the price elasticity of demand is less than 1. If you're not taking the absolute value here and you're keeping your elasticity of demand as negative numbers, then your inelastic demand would be where your elasticity of demand is between negative 1 and 0. What we can notice is that if our elasticity of demand is less than 1, then just plugging in the formula here, we can say that the absolute value of the percent change in quantity demanded divided by the percent change in price has to be less than 1. And then multiplying both sides by this denominator here, we're going to see that we get inelastic demand when the percent change in our quantity demanded is less than our percent change in price. So for example, our company would be facing inelastic demand if, for example, in response to a 30% change in price, the company saw only a 10% reduction in quantity demanded. So we can think here how that impacts total revenue. So if we said if the price were to go up by 30% and the quantity demanded were to go down by only 10%, that we would see larger overall revenue because the increased price would trump the fact that they're not selling as much as they were before. And we talked about this earlier when we discussed the relationship between elasticity and revenue. And in fact, what we saw is, you know, not only in this particular example, but every time we were at an inelastic point on the demand curve, we saw that if the company were to raise its price, its total revenue would actually increase. Hopefully by now we know that the goal of a company is to maximize profit, which is often not the same as just maximizing total revenue, since total revenue is just the money that's coming in from selling a product and doesn't take the cost of production into account. But in this particular case, we can think about what the profit implications are for this chain of total revenue increase because of an increase in price. So what we see is that if our total revenue is going up because we increased our price, we can also say that our quantity demanded decreased, right? Because again, demand curves slope downwards, so if we were to raise the price of our product, we would see less of that product being sold. But then if you think about it, if our quantity that we're producing and selling decreases, we're making less stuff, then it must be the case that the total cost of production is less. You know, we might not be producing as efficiently. We actually don't know on that level. But what we do know that is that in total, our costs are going to go down. So then if we think about profit, we say that profit is just equal to total revenue minus total cost. And we said with our price increase, our total revenue increased and our total cost decreased. So what we're actually doing is we're subtracting off a smaller number than we were before. And we're adding a bigger number than we were before. So by definition, when we're facing inelastic demand, this price increase 
has to lead to an increase in profit. So basically what we saw here is that whenever a firm is facing inelastic demand, an increase in price is going to lead to an increase not only in total revenue, but also an increase in profit. So whenever a firm is facing inelastic demand at a particular price quantity pair, there's an incentive for that company to move away from that point. Therefore, it stands to reason that no points where the firm is facing inelastic demand can possibly be optimal or profit maximizing. And therefore, we can reach the conclusion that whenever a firm is maximizing their profit, that they must be at a price quantity pair such that the price elasticity of demand is elastic at that point.